So for today's class, what you'll need is a trigger point ball. Uh, you can get these from Rebel Sport or most physio places. It's the preferable is to use a, the trigger point ball. Um, if you don't have one of those, or you can use a tennis ball, it's not as effective, um, but eventually get one of these. If you don't have any of those, use a broomstick. You can do a similar job with the broomstick. This is a bit more effective though. Um, we need the ball like we used previously, about a four to six inch, four to six inch size ball diameter, um, or a rolled up towel. So if you, don't, if you don't have a ball, and then we need something to put your heels on if you need some support with a, a lift in your heels. So you can just stand on your shoes, take them off and stand on your shoes, use some weight plates, use two even sized books, and we need a chair as well. And if you don't have any of those, please don't use this as, as an excuse not to do this session. You'll still get a lot out of it. The next exercise is using the trigger point ball. So three main lines through the uh, midfoot. So the so not going onto the heel. So just before the heel, I'm doing this row here, right in the center of the foot, and doing through here and then up around here as well. So just before I get to the ball of the foot. So essentially this section, if I pull my toes back, I want to have one, two, three lines of pressure going through it. And I do three each time. So I have my heel planted on the ground. And then I'm putting pressure through my foot as I turn it outwards. So I'm turning on the heel. And I'll do three of this on the same line. So I'm more towards my heel here. I'm just following the balls that rolls. Then I'm going to roll my heel back a little bit so it'll make the ball go more towards the middle of the foot now. And see how I do this? It domes my foot. It makes my foot do this kind of rounded motion at the top. This is very good. It helps spread the feet open. Shoes are the biggest culprit in tight shoes, tight and narrow shoes. They're the biggest culprit for why feet get the way they do. So I'll do three there, and then I roll back a little bit so my, it'll come up to the front of the foot more now. Three lines. So I'm putting pressure in as I turn the foot outwards this way. I put pressure in, then I let the pressure off to re, uh, reposition. Pressure in and pressure off. So we'll repeat that one more time, but for a quick session, all you need is just do three for each of the layers and it puts so much stimulation through the bottom of the foot. The brain really likes this input. I'm going to go towards, towards the middle. So a foot needs to be both a rigid lever. When we do push off and we walk, when the foot goes in this position, it has to become rigid to push us off. It needs to be also flexible movable in different parts of the gait cycle. So a healthy foot, I used to be able to do this, I can't do it anymore, can stand on this in the middle of the foot on the one leg with some balance, can stand on it and it's not totally unbearable. So most feet can't do that. So let's change side. So the heel stays on the ground. It's a bit of a knack to this, I find a lot of people find very difficult to coordinate this. But so I've got the pressure on the outside, foot turns out, I've got pressure going through the foot, I let some pressure off. Pressure again. So this exercise is one of the first ones on the series to get people out of orthotics. And some of the other things I'll be teaching in regard to feet is, is how to get people out of orthotics. It needs more than what I'll be teaching, but it's a really good start. So I'll roll this towards the center now. The feet are highly neglected. Uh, in especially Western civilization, I think, <laughs> highly neglected. It's just money being in shoes all day, all day. So you can do this Tai Chi training with no shoes. I'll have shoes on because I, I don't like scrubbing the bottom of my feet when I do this on pavers. Um, but yeah, if you want to get more sensation going through your feet, if you're doing this on grass, for example, it's a really good thing to do. We'll repeat that one more time. Um, just having your feet out of shoes more often already is giving more stimulation, more, more wakefulness, strength building to the feet. Just simply doing that. So let's, uh, let's start, so your feet together and your hands on your knees. And I'm bending my knees back and forward, very easy, but I'm aiming to keep my heels heavy. So I feel my heels heavy, heavy, heavy. And as I do this, so I feel heavy heel, heavy heel. Then I feel the weight 
also shifting towards, as I bend my legs, shifting towards this row of toes here, the, the metatarsals. And then when I come back, I feel the weight shift back here. So what this does, when I keep a heavy heel, even though I feel pressure through here as well, the, I still have a heavy heel. This allows a pronation of the feet, pronation of supination to start to happen too, and pronation of the heel to roll forward as well. So I'm just keeping heavy heel. That's the main cue. Heavy heels, feet relaxed. Thinking about your feet as soft, like melted plastic. Melted plastic melting into the ground. So there's a full contact of your feet. And you may find it hard to contact the left heel. Very common. The, the brain can uh, lose a sense of the left heel. It's really important for hip position to regain that sense. So especially pay attention to your left heel. You may feel clicking in your knee or here clicking. This is all fine. It's only a problem. Any joint that clicks if it's painful. Painful clicking is a problem. But normal clicking is nor. So as we do more reps, you may find you can sink a bit more. If I go to the side here. So as I sink, my heels are still staying heavy. They're on the ground. I've been doing this for a long time, so I can sink all the way down here. I still have my heels on the ground. And you may better do that already if you're someone versed in this training already. Otherwise, it might be something that might take you um, weeks, months, or even years to get down to. But this warm up's very effective for the knees, the ankles, and the next part, we start to circle. So again, I've got that, uh, so just small circles, thinking about my feet like they're melted plastic, so they're stuck to the ground. I'm not making my circles so big that I peel off the ground, peel off the ground, peel, definitely not. Or like the feet are like suction cups, suction to the ground. The other way. So our limbs move in spiral motions and Tai Chi works with spirals very, very well. So this here is training the spiral motion of the legs. Uh, this exercise is contraindicated when people do a big one and do this big scoop, like a uh, old skiing exercise, it's contraindicated there because there's big pressure on the meniscus. Small circles though is very good to do. It's good for the brain to have a feeling awareness of this spiral. And you may even feel it loosening your lower back as well. So from here, lift up on the toe here. So you're coming up on the ball of the foot. So it's you're aiming to make here straight. Straight. So we're just flexing especially the big toe, all the toes, but especially big toe. And for those of you who have limited big toe motion, this is a good start to get more motion. Not pushing into pain, go into stiffness, but not into pain. And then come up, circle the hips, just small circles. So when we're training the body in touch here, we want to be gentle, gentle with the body, soften, so we release tension by softening. So I'm aiming to do this not in a fast way, not in a rushed way, not like I've got to force my way through it all. Definitely not. So when I'm soft in my body, and I use small circular motions, spiral motions, it releases long held tension. So here I'm imagining I'm in a cylinder and I've got to clean the inside of the cylinder with my hips. The head staying in the center. So this eases up the hip joints, circular joint at the back, the lower back as well. And mobilizes even up to here because the head has to stay still. Go the other way. So just small circles as you're feeling how your body is today. So you find you can make the circle a bit bigger, but it's easy to make it bigger, not forcing it. So it's a key theme we'll be doing all of the Tai Chi, 
we're not forcing things, we're actually relaxing into them. Practice is a lot more enjoyable when you have to for, don't have to force it. Okay, so sitting in your chair, not leaning against the back of it, so sitting on the sit bones, so the bones, uh, if you rock your pelvis back, you feel like you're sitting on your tailbone, if you rock it forward, you'll find, you'll find some lumpy bits on the bottom of your pelvis, that's your sit bones or the ischial tuberosity, and I want you to just feel both of those bones. Often the left one is a bit harder to feel because of the natural asymmetries in the body. So we're just feeling that both and to feel them evenly you can actually change the orientation of your pelvis just by sensing that. Okay, so we've got 90 degrees, ideally around 90 degrees, 90 degrees here, ball between the thighs here. And then I've got my feet or my shins so they're parallel to each other, so I'm not like that or doing that kind of thing, parallel. And from here, I'm rising up on the balls of my feet like I'm doing a seated calf raise, then going all the way up, pushing through the big toe, coming down to the ball of the foot, lifting the feet as high as I can, as hard as I can, rolling through the foot up onto the big toe, so putting pressure to the big toe. Not, not uncommon for the bottom of the foot to cramp, just showing how weak that spot is. So we're just activating a heap of muscles here, getting your brain aware what's happening in your body here. So when I do this movement with my ankle, my fibula, the side bone here, is making that motion. So relative to the ankle and the knee, it's making that motion. And when I push back this way, it's making that motion there. So the fibula is doing this movement. So it's important that it can make that motion. Okay, from here, opening. So you're keeping the ball between so your knees don't move. And I'm pivoting on the heel, turning the feet in as much as I can, turning them out as much as I can. So what that looks like in the front here is this and then turning in as far as I can. Just notice if you've got one foot that won't turn in as much, often it's the right side for people, it doesn't turn in as much as the left. And we're doing this without moving your knees, no motion in the knees. So we're making it purely the rotational movement that comes from the knee. It's very good to have conscious control over that motion. So when we do Tai Chi walking, um, roll, uh, press roll back motions in Tai Chi, this movement is always occurring in the knee. It's just, it's very really subtle. So we're just making it highlighted so the body can access it. Good. Next one, the ball between the knees still. So I'm imagining like I've got a string from my belly button here. I pull the string forward and it makes my belly come forward. So it's like I'm arching my back. I'm really trying to arch it out. And then like I'm pushing in towards my belly and I don't want my fingers to push into my belly so then I'm letting it sit back. So I'm rocking back on my tailbone. I get the string, pulls me forward again. Then I'm pushing, I don't want to touch my belly button with my hands, so I sit back. So the motion is occurring from the pelvis here. So it's called lumbar pelvic control, it just means pelvis and lower back control can feel really nice on the achy lower back. So all I want you is just about to do this motion. So it's coming through this section. That's where the movement's happening. If you find it hard to figure this out, what people do is this. So you see how I'm moving from the hip, but my whole spine's moving. So I'm just hinging from my hip. So I want you to keep your, your head quite still, sit back and then pelvis rock forward. When I do this with my clients, they find this hard to get this motion. I grab their hips from the, from the back, and as they go forward, I tip their hip forward, then I pull their hip back, and I get them, just follow my hands. So you might better imagine that, someone grabbing your hips, tipping the hip back, then they're gonna tip it forward, so you just help them out, until your body goes, oh, that's it. That's the movement. 
So if you find this really hard to do, please practice until it's like so easy. You're like, I don't know why this is in the program. It means that your body's accessed this movement. Highly important for Tai Chi training. Highly important if you have pelvic floor issues, lower back pain, hip pain of any kind, knee issues, even feet issues. Uh, really collapsed in arches of the feet. You need to be able to do this motion. Okay, good. Last one is that we're using this ball. It's why the ball's good. So you can use a rod or towel between your knees, but the ball's good. So I'm going to pull this knee back and push this one forward like that. Then I'm going to pull this one back, push that one forward. And you may feel your adductors, so their groin muscles on the inner thigh, working. And that's a good thing because the adductor pulls the hip back, helps it suction it into the joint better. And often people find the left hip harder to feel that left groin. So what we're not doing here is the knees do this. So the body will try to figure out it'll do this, or it'll, it'll do some motion with the body, but not, nothing happening here. So we want the body to stay quite still. It'll move a little bit, it's fine. But we want this, section, this feeling of pulling back, pushing forward through the longitudinal axis of the bones this way. And the way you can help this to happen is to squeeze the ball a little bit. So as I pull my left knee back, I squeeze in a little bit too. And I feel that adducted quite, quite nicely. Good, keep going. If this is hard to get, it's really important that your body can access it. And you've probably been suffering for suffering with hip or lower back pain or injury or stiffness for a long time if the body can't access this. So we're freeing up, we're allowing the brain to connect to movements that it would have had as a child. We're regaining it all. So my body's just naturally turning here because it's working with the rotation. So I'll move into qua squats. The qua is the inguinal crease here. It's formed by what's happening with the pelvis. So when I bend my knees, I have a sense of sitting in here, like I'm sitting on a visible stool. The pelvis tucks under just slightly, but not so much that I'm really tucked under this way. And I lose a sense of uh, bend here. So here it's like this is straight. I want here to be a bit of a, a bend. So my spine is vertical, the pelvis is a bit tucked under. So that's forming the quire. The spring in the quire is I feel the spring go through here and through the knees, through the feet. So even the feet are making this kind of motion here. If I relax my feet, they'll naturally make this spring. The knees will have a spring force go through the knees and not into the knees. And I'll make sure here is soft. So I'm relaxing in here, which means I'm relaxing the hip flexors in particular. And then the right muscles come online. So I can spring here. I'm moving here. So I'm just springing my knees, but not here. The body tends to do this kind of motion. So I want to spring. So force can move up and down through my body. We want that. Okay, so we just soften, soften this area here. So that's what the quire is. And then it's important when we start moving that you can rotate into the quire, not lose this one, not pushing this hip forward, not losing my spine. If I stay vertical, I keep a good quire sit here. As soon as I do this, I lose one of my quire. So the quire is really important because it prevents overload of your knee. It teaches you how to really rotate properly into your hip, into the leg, connect, spring out of that area. So Tai Chi walking uses the quire all the time. So what, we're, what you notice you're able to do over time is that when you move, especially when you sit back that your hip doesn't cock. So I drop this hip, this one rises, that'll cause problems in the knee and the hip itself. That it's not this way, that it's not pushed out this way, that it's not back this way. Just have a good control of that qua and I can relax and now I feel the force in the feet and I feel really spring loaded for movements with my arms now too. So that's the qua. So we're going to activate the glutes here. As soon as we get some glute activation going, it supports the knees. So most people I find need this. So let's go feet shoulder width, then open the feet about 10 degrees, just a little bit. Most people need that, about 10 degrees, it's easier. Then I've got a sense of twisting my feet, like I'm wrapping my little toe around my heel, 
or if my feet were to move that they're gonna do that. I've got that sense of twist. It's maybe only two or five percent of my strength, but there's this torg there. It makes a reflexive action to get the glutes working. Then I squeeze my butt as hard as I can. I can try and crack a walnut between my butt cheeks. And I want you, can you just feel, can you feel that? Can you feel your butt working? Some people can't. And with this practice, it'll help you better feel those muscles engage. And then let it off, let it relax. Get your knuckles or your, your knuckles this way or with your thumb. Whack into your backside, center of your backside, top. So we're getting sensory awareness. So the body connects the muscles usually through sensory awareness first. So the feedback coming in from the muscle to the brain. And then we get motor awareness is like the brain to the muscle making it work. So even when I stop hitting, I still feel where I just hit. So the information goes to the brain and the brain finds that muscle. So we do the same thing. So I've got that bit of a twist and I squeeze, the, squeeze my butt as hard as I can. And I can feel that really working, squeeze even harder without pushing the hips forward. A function of the glutes is hip extension. So to push your hip forward, we still want the body to be stacked. We don't want to do this stacked. So head over the torso, torso over the hips, hips over the feet. Let it off. It will all be soft. The brain likes finding muscles and then losing them and having to find it again. Whacking again. <laughs> Nearly every knee issue I see has a glute problem. So it's important we get glutes activating here, working. Twist, squeeze without pushing your body forward. Not holding your diaphragm, not we're just squeezing our butt. We're not holding breath. See if you can squeeze even harder. Then let it go. Okay, so let's go into the class squat. So if you're really tight in your ankles, you don't have much movement in your ankles, or really inflexible in your hips, I recommend you use the weight plates, or you can take your shoes off, and then you can stand on the front of your shoe. So you just arrange your shoes here, and you're standing on the front of the shoe, so it'll give you a bit of a, a heel wedge. Um, it allows you to stay more upright, better sink a bit more, um, and open the other joints, so the hips and the knees, without being limited by the ankle. And over time, you can take the, the height down until you have no, no extra thing helping you. So when we do this, we have the feet shoulder width, feet a little bit turned out like we just did, about 10 degrees. And really important is that the tripod, so I'll mention the tripod a lot. So the center of the heel, knuckle of the big toe, knuckle of the little toe, 50% weight, 50% weight, 50% weight. And yes, we're looking at 150% here. That has weighting all the time, evenly weighting all the time. So we'd be aware of that. So I'm stepping on heels on there. So I'm stepping my heels onto there. Now I'm aware of the center of my heel. I'm aware of the knuckle of the big toe, knuckle of the little toe, tripod take the weight. Now as I bend, I bend my knees, but I bend here too. So I sink straight down keeping the weight even in the tripod, then I come back up. But I'm not locking things out, so I'm a little bit off lock in my hip and my knees. So I have that ground connection all the time. Okay, so what's really important with this quad squat is that I have a little bit of a tuck of my pelvis, just a tiny bit, so I tuck under. If I tuck under too much, it looks like that. Don't want that, but I don't want to tuck it where it goes this way where I've got to arch back. This is what load your back, overload your back. Uh, you don't connect to the feet properly. So I'm actually tucking my pelvis under this way. Like if I had a tail, I'm tucking my tail between my legs. And what it does, it allows you to connect into your feet. As soon as I tuck here, I feel like it connects into my feet, into the tripod. So we have that neural connection, connect into the feet. So I have that. When I bend now, as much as my knee goes forward, my backside goes back really important this happens. So 
So if you make this happen, as much as the knee goes forward, the backside goes back, and keeping the weight even in the tripod, you'll have a really good squat. You won't be overloading anything. The problem comes when the knee goes forward, people bend, knee goes forward, the pelvis goes straight down. See how there's nothing going backwards here? This is loading my knee like crazy. There's more of a tendency of the front of my forefoot to take the weight, not much in my heels. It's good for certain purposes. For what we're doing here, we want to really connect into the tripod as much as the knee goes forward, hip goes back, which means I sit into here. And let's do some reps here now. So not locking out, letting the belly stay relaxed, shoulders, arms relaxed. And then I'm aiming to relax my legs as much as I can. Just keeping pressure in the tripod, knee go forward, hip go back. The body will have a natural lean forward, that's fine, it's meant to do that. So I only go as low, but if I went any lower my heel, I feel like I lose weight in my heel, or I lose weight on the inner edge. If my knee comes in, I'll lose weight on the inner edge. If my knee was to go out, I'd lose weight on the outer edge. So I go as low as what I can keep the tripod, and I come back up. Or I go as low that if I go any lower, it feels like I want to tense everything up. Don't do that, I want to tense my body, I want to tense here. So I stay just shy of that. So the class squats is a movement focus and a relaxation focus. So we don't sink lower by going into tension, we sink lower by relaxing. So I get to here, I feel like, oh, it's a bit tight here. I'll relax here. I feel the pressure go to here, but I can go a bit lower. I feel it more here. Okay, I'll relax here, I'll let me go lower. I feel it here, I'll relax that, and let me go lower. So I go lower by relaxing, not by going, I just wanna go low, so I'll just push it. So it allows my body to really arrange itself, the nervous system to arrange itself through my body to the ground. So it's really useful for all of Tai Chi practice. Fundamental to Tai Chi walking, fundamental to overcoming knee and hip issues within Tai Chi. And you might feel your quads working pretty hard. This is good, if you need to stop, that's fine. We'll do another 10 more. About this speed is good. So I'm feeling too fast, a bit hard to feel. That's why Tai Chi's done so slowly. So you can feel every single millimeter of the movement. What's the body doing? Is it tensing? Is it connecting when you move? Phase through phase of movement. Something isn't powerful unless you can do it smoothly and slowly. Last one. Very good. Give your legs a shake, just like a dog shaking off water off its fur. So letting the muscle fibers open. So for the preparation, as we're building into the quiet squats just then, we did exercises to make sure the hip has space to move, the knee can rotate, and the feet can pronate, supinate, big toe can move. So it allows what we just did to be more effective and less overload of 
constantly overloaded positions and joints.